Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good to see you all again. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Art Kirsch and I are very proud to once again present the virtual gourmet, John Mariani. Here I am again. Good, good morning, guys. Hey, I have a question for you, uh, Mr. Mariani, Mr. Virtual Gourmet. Uh, since among the three of us, uh, I think uh, it's not hard to uh, imagine that I am the what is it, the Philistine of uh, uh, knowledge and, and wine and good food. Um, but we have a holiday season coming up and we like to bring wine every so often. And I'm tired of asking, well, what do you like? Uh, uh, but maybe I should. Do you have any hints on how I might choose a, a good wine to bring to somebody? Well, first of all, don't say, what do you like? Because that's telling them right, oh, we're going to bring some wine. Well, unless you say, do you want us to bring some wine for dinner? But the holidays are, in fact, more special. I mean, if I were going over to somebody's house tomorrow and uh, I say, hey, I want to bring some wine, what are you serving? And they said, oh, we're doing lobster. Okay, I'll bring a wine for lobster. <clears throat> holidays are, are more special. Um, and so there, there are some traditions associated with some of them, what you bring. And, of course, during the Jewish holidays, you would bring a good um, kosher wine. Uh, and I do not mean the manage of its uh, the sweet uh, wine made in Brooklyn, uh, which some people actually prefer, but it's going to be on the table anyway. There are terrific, terrific wines coming out of Israel now. Cabernets, Cardamonets, Merlots, um, very, very, especially the reds and, and, and some of the whites. So that would be a nice surprise to bring to your Jewish friends. Um, they're rarely very expensive. And to uh, bring a couple of bottles of Israeli wines. So that's that's a very good idea. Um, when it comes to uh, Thanksgiving holidays, um, you have to assume there's going to be turkey unless there's not going to be turkey, which somebody's going to say to, we're not doing turkey this year. We're doing a vegan, a thing that's made out of tofu that looks like a turkey, in which case you feign illness or, 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 or have to work on that day and don't go. Um, Thanksgiving, of course, you can be very, very versatile with, uh, with turkey and stuffing. But remember, I think we might have talked about this a year ago, so I'll go over it quickly, that there's a lot of sweet and spicy elements to a turkey dinner, uh, not least the stuffing and cranberry sauce and sweet potatoes. So you want to get a wine that is not very dry and tannic. You want to get a wine which has a somewhat lighter body and that has more fruit to it so that a Beaujolais, not a Beaujolais Nouveau, which would work in November because that's where they come out. They're, they're fun. Um, they're not bad wines, but they're not real Beaujolais. But an aged Beaujolais that's a year or two old um, is a very, very good idea with uh, Turkey. Pinot Noir certainly goes well and a whole slew of uh, white wines too. Um, Turning towards Christmas, um, there's just a myriad of uh, suggestions. What I would do is, as I said, don't ask uh, the host what kind of wine he likes. Uh, in fact, if you've known him quite a long time and you've had dinner with him and he's made some comment that he really liked that wine that you had ordered at dinner when you went to that steakhouse or that Italian restaurant, bring them that. That is always a delightful surprise because what, the, what it's saying is, oh, you remembered. That's really, really nice of you. Okay? New Year's, of course, champagne is requisite, except that these days there's so many uh, sparkling wines of very good quality that you could bring three or four bottles of a Spanish cava or an Italian Prosecco or an Italian or a California sparkling wine for a bottle of champagne that costs you minimum of 70 80 100 dollars and uh, unless they're very finicky about it being champagne i think they wouldn't mind getting three bottles of a really good um, sparkling wine to one bottle of a mediocre champagne um, but wine is not for everybody first of all and i have a lot of friends who either they don't drink wine at all or they're not particularly crazy about it or discerning and the, the last thing you want to do is to bring a hundred dollar bottle of wine to a guy or a woman who doesn't care okay um and and when this happens it's very frustrating because what they do is oh we're going to save this for the another big meal <laughs> you know no i brought it so i i myself could taste it along with you <laughs> who, who, whom i'm giving it okay? 
So in, the case, in those cases, forget wine. What else can you bring? But you can always bring flowers, which are much appreciated, especially by the ladies. Um, the flowers are always, always a great idea. Um, everybody is going to say thank you and put them immediately on the table in a vase and show off your largesse. Um, but there are foods which just say gift, okay? Caviar. Even though you can't get because it's it's not allowed in the country, um, uh, real Russian or Iranian caviar out of the Caspian Sea because it's uh, not allowed to be fished. It's because it's pretty much fished out. Um, you can get some very good reasonable facsimiles. Um, of caviar, uh, which is coming out of China and, and other and other uh, regions of the world, which is pretty good stuff, but it's just not the real McCoy. Um, foie gras, uh, not everybody likes foie gras, but if you do, bringing um, a terrine of foie gras is going to be much, much appreciated. Uh, as a matter of fact, you might even say, let me bring the appetizer. It'll be something very special. And you bring the foie gras and you just slice it up and you have a wonderful, wonderful appetizer. Um, cheeses. Everybody likes cheese, unless you're lactate intolerant, lactic intolerant, whatever. Um, everybody likes cheese. And I think that everybody likes good cheeses. And increasingly, though Americans don't eat a heck of a lot of cheese uh, after dinner or even before dinner. And it's usually the same old camembert or brie. Um, there are great cheese shops uh, all across America, certainly in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, um, here in New York, uh, the one famous one is Murray's, Murray's Cheese. All of them ship, okay? And they ship it over the night, overnight. And the nice thing is that it's not pre-cut. So if you go to their website and you uh, say, oh, that's a very interesting uh, a poise, but that can be kind of runny. I don't want it to be, you know, too runny. It's going to take a couple of days to get here. They will ensure that when it gets to you that cheese will be ready to uh, ready to serve. They also will pre-cut a big wheel of something, um, be it cheddar or, or uh, rope for something. So, so they'll cut it. It's not going to be pre-cut. One of the problems of going to a store and you look, oh, they have 50 cheeses at uh, the supermarket. Well, they do, but you don't know when that thing was cut. Could have been two days ago, could have been a week ago. And when you cut into a cheese, it, it changes the chemistry and even the structure of the cheese. So um, so cheese is a very, very good idea. Uh, the number of cheeses out there, you could, you could send a gift basket. They all have gift baskets, which usually includes a sausage or something like that. Um, and maybe some balsamic vinegar is in the package. Or you can make a selection of cheeses. So if you know that your host likes French cream cheeses like Brie, Camembert, Epois, Pont Levesque, San André, you could get a selection of six of those. Your host will adore that. Um, maybe the person really loves different varieties of cheddar. Um, cheddar, unfortunately, was never protected by the people in cheddar as a um, as a trademark name. So there's ch anybody can make cheddar, the whole world. Um, so that means that there's very good cheddar coming out of every place from from France and, uh, of course, England, um, as well as California and Virginia and uh, Cabot's from uh, from Vermont is a very, very good cheddar. So that's an interesting selection. Uh, or you can go just blue cheeses, blue Dauvin, um, uh, double gloused um, um, Stilton cheeses, of course, um, uh, uh, Roquefort, and some very good cheeses coming out of uh, America, too, like Maytag Blue. So that's a very good way to go. Um, the other alternative I really like is chocolate. Uh, there may be 10 people in the world who are not crazy about cheese, but uh, nobody says no to chocolate. I did meet somebody once, a wizened, winish person, or a reptilian type of person. I don't eat chocolate. I don't like chocolate. Never have. Good. Um, everybody else in the world loves chocolate. Consequently, a gift of it, a gift box, is always a swell idea. Now, you can go the Whitman sampler way, but everybody knows that's pretty cheap chocolate, okay? Or you could get my favorite American chocolate, by the way, and there are many, many, many artisanal chocolates around the world, but right out there in Southern California, Mrs. C's, Mrs. C's chocolates are excellent, and the fresher you get them, the better. better. And I have a friend. I have a friend out there in California, and every time uh, the holiday comes around, she sends me some C's candy, which she has bought right in the shop and sends it herself. But that's a wonderful sampler. Other than that, 
you can go to any chocolate shop if they exist or a fudge shop or, or whatever, um, or online and order if you like Godiva, which I don't particularly like um, Godiva, but um, Lint is an excellent chocolate, Souchard is an excellent chocolate, and there are very good American chocolates too. You're just not going to go wrong with uh, that. And you really don't necessarily expect everybody to, uh, to for them to serve it uh, after the meal. But by and large, if it is a box with all those little bonbons in them, or you can get some macaroons or that sort of thing, um, by and large, uh, it's going to be ser served. And I guarantee men, women, and children will all thank you for it. So those are the types of things I like to uh, bring. Um, I might bring scotch. If I know the, know the guy is a scotch lover, I might bring, bring a, a bottle of uh, vodka if I know he's a vodka lover. But those are kind of simple, simple choices. Just think a little bit extravagantly and think very much in terms of what your, your host likes and probably will serve so you get a little of it too. Wow. Well, John, keep in mind that life is a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. That's right. <laughs> well, I think I, I think we should. I I I have another thought, but I'm going to save that for uh, the uh, outtakes, uh, because I think that's a perfect ending. Uh, life is like a box of chocolates, and we're so fortunate to have the virtual gourmet to explain what those chocolates should possibly be. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.